welcome to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts and my fb page dr srinivas concepts this is dr srinivas neurologist from rajmandri andhra pradesh india i am also the medical author of the book focused neurology my email is sriklpm@gmail.com today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic vestibulo cochlear nerve that is the eighth nerve part one clinical anatomy cranial nerves part 51 acoustic nerve vestibulo cochlear nerve part one the vestibulo cochlear nerve or the eighth nerve has two components the vestibular component which is responsible for a balance and the cochlear component blended into a single trunk so the vestibular component is required for balance but what are all the other structures which are required for balance there are three structures which are primarily responsible for balance one is the vestibular component of the eighth nerve second is the posterior column third is the ocular component so vision vestibular component and the posterior column are responsible for a balance so these three systems should be intact for us to be in a good in having a good balance so if these three systems are working well they function in unison and we have a perfect balance but out of these three even at least if two components are working well still we can maintain an appropriate balance but if two systems are also affected and only one system is present and then we will lose our balance this is the basis for rombok's test rombok's test we use it to find out whether the posterior column is affected or not especially the tabis dorsalis so what happens in person suffering from tabis dorsalis or neurosyphilis the posterior column is affected so in the posterior column is affected there are only two components which are functioning for a person to have balance that is the ocular component vision and second is the vestibular component so to find out whether the posterior column is affected or not what we ask the person to do is we ask him to stand and we ask him to close his eyes so the moment he closes his eyes we are removing his second component also that is the ocular system vision for balance so already he has posterior column being affected his posterior column is affected and on top of it we are removing his vision also so with one system intact vestibular system being intact he can't maintain balance and he will fall so this is the basis for rombok's test so if we un understand all these basics we will really enjoy the clinical neurology the joy of clinical neurology so vestibular component is primarily responsible for balance and the and the cochlear component is responsible for hearing so the cochlear portion subserves hearing the vestibular portion subserves equilibration coordination and orientation in space although they are united along their course through the skull they differ so greatly both functionally and in their anatomic relationships that they should be considered separately so this is the acoustic nerve or vestibular cochlear nerve you can see the three semicircular canals the cochlea they are responsible for vestibular functions and auditory functions coming together joining together forming the vestibular cochlear nerve and entering the brain stem and then subserving the cochlear nuclei on one hand and the vestibular nuclei on the other hand where they divide the membranous we are now let's talk about the cochlear now the clinical anatomy the membranous labyrinth has two components the vestibular apparatus and the cochlear duct the acoustic nerve traverses the internal auditory canal crosses the cerebellopontine angle bifurcates to synapse in both the dorsal and the ventral nuclei then they synapse in the trapezoid body and ascend as the lateral lemniscus and pass through the inferior colliculus 
to the medial geniculate body of thalamus. Remember, the lateral geniculate body of thalamus is responsible for vision and medial geniculate body of thalamus is responsible for auditory function. From the medial geniculate body, auditory fibers pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule as the auditory radiations which runs through the sublenticular portion of the internal capsule. Fibers terminate in the Hessel's gyrus, that is the transverse temporal convolutions and parts of the planum temporal which make up the primary and secondary auditory cortex that is the broadband's area 41 and 42. Auditory association area, vernix area in the dominant hemisphere just lies posterior to the primary auditory cortex. It is responsible for understanding and comprehension of words. So someone speaks to us, it goes to the auditory apparatus and then to the adjoining vernix area which tries to understand. So basically comprehension is done by vernix area, the repetition goes to the arcuate fasciculus, the fluency through the Broca's area. We are talking about the components of the language. So vernix area is responsible for understanding or comprehension of the language. So the auditory association cortex that is the vernix area in the dominant hemisphere lies just posterior to the primary auditory cortex. The primary auditory cortex is tonotopically organized with high frequencies medially and low frequencies laterally. So these are all the important concepts of the 8th nerve or vestibular cochlear nerve and the three important components subserving the balance. So we have seen the mechanisms for balance and how if posterior column gets affected and we then remove the vision by asking the patient to close the eyes, that is the rhombox test, person has got a tendency to fall. So when you understand the basics or the principles behind the rhombox test and thus why or how the balance is affected, you will really enjoy neurology that is the joy of clinical neurology. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. If you want to understand the further concepts of neurology, I put all the concepts of neurology in a question answer format in the book called Focus Neurology, which is available all over the world online, including all leading booksellers, including Amazon. So if interested, this book could be purchased online. Uh, if you have liked this video, kindly share the link to your friends, but please like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Dr. Sinos Medical Concepts and my page Dr. Sinos Concepts. Thank you. Bye.